everybody, and welcome back to Ross and Wizzy's Fan Fiction Power Hour. I am your host, Wizzy Puff, and with me, as always, is Ross Pitt. Hey, Wizzy, did you get the blood out? Wink. You weren't supposed to tell them about the blood. I didn't tell them about the blood. Wait, what blood? I was talking about the cocaine. Oh, you're using slang. I was using blood as a... Yeah. <laughs> well, alrighty then. Uh, that's much better than a... Well, actually, that is technically a lot better than a, whatever was implied with the actual blood. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So how has your week been? Long and messy. This has been how my week has been going, pretty much. Nice. And speaking of that, if there are any audio issues, my deepest apologies. Blame Wizzy. It's his fault. What? It's possibly my fault. Even if it's on my end, it's his fault. All of it's his fault. There's a chance that there's issues on my side, but come on. I'm endearing. Mm-hmm. Right. All right, I have to confess to everyone. Ross beat me at arm wrestling. Oh, man. I feel like this is needed to bring up on the podcast. I did beat you at arm wrestling. I, I think this just, like, it gives more weight to the abuse allegations uh, about Ross and me. Yeah, I did beat you at arm wrestling. Still riding that high. <laughs> Ross is strong. Supposedly I'm strong. I don't believe it one bit. I do not lift. I sit in a chair all day at work. With a dumbbell in your hand. I eat junk food. No. <laughs> you carbo load on junk food. This is just how weak Wizzy is. But yeah, no. For those of you who want to know, me, my brother, Wizzy, and his sister... We're all in a hotel room um, because I was going to visit him for the first time. We explained that whole thing a bit ago. Anyways, so my brother wanted to arm wrestle Wizzy, and they did. And I can't remember who won that. It was me. And then my brother arm wrestled his sister. His sister arm wrestled him. And, and then... I can't exactly remember how it goes, but then I arm wrestled all three of them in succession and won each one. <laughs> and I think, you know, pretty, pretty cool of me. Um, it's like one hand arm wrestling. The other hand is waving in front of your face as you yawn. Yeah, that's so easy. But no, I my theory is that just. Everyone else was too tired to actually arm wrestle me, and Wizzy's also left-handed, and I'm pretty sure he was using his right hand, so... <laughs> okay, we're not going to diminish your accomplishments. I'm just saying, we have to look at the facts here. It is fair. You know, gotta keep, the, keep it in the history books that there may have been a reason that I didn't win. It's true, there might have. Maybe it's because I'm tough, maybe it's because you're weak. We don't know. Yeah, but all we know now is people keep calling me Wimpy Puff. <laughs> it's devastating. My street cred is ruined. It's actually only me. I'm those 47 alt accounts. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why we had comments on our podcast for the first time. Uh, that was a good trip, though. Well, I mean, it wasn't much of a trip for me because it was my home state, but... It was, a, it was a nice vacation for me. Well, you can take trips in your home state. Yeah, that's true. And I guess probably not a state as puny as yours. Whoa! Teeny okay. tiny little that state. Place. <laughs> uh, but that trip just kind of feels like a distant memory now, doesn't it? Indeed. Oh, and that reminds me. What? I think uh, we have a uh, nice little story today called Distant Memories. Oh! So tonight we have Distant Memories by Speedy Quill. Ooh. Uh, now this one is a spike fic, which, you know, we haven't done a spike fic in a little while. I forget what the 
last one was, but it was probably the Pride Month one. Shoot, that's a while ago. Yeah. He's my boy. How would could we do that to him? I know we've been saying we need to do another one for a little bit now. Literally none of these even feature Spike. Wow. I think the last time Spike was even mentioned was GLaDOS introduces the ponies to deadly neurotoxin. <laughs> oh, man. This is tragic for all the Spike fans. Yeah, it hurts to be one. But don't worry, because today, this one's looking real tasty. 40 likes, zero dislikes. You're right, it was the Pride Month one. Oh my, that oh was over man. a year ago, wasn't it? That was the Pride Month before last. That was episode 76. That was, that was that long ago? Yep. That's crazy. That was our fifth episode back after I came back for whatever that was. All right, so this one is tagged Death, Drama, and Sad. So if you want a happy fic, maybe go to the last episode we released. Although, whether that's really happy is up for debate. I remember we had a big discussion about that. <laughs> well, you were the one saying that the animals were, for some reason, for the destruction. But, you know, that, that's a bit of a off-topic. I suppose. All right. Distant Memories by Speedy Quill. And if you want to avoid being a distant memory, you all should Ooh. go down in the description and read this story for yourself. Yeah, I forgot about that. But if Come you want to become a normal memory still, but dead as well, you can also just give it a like instead. That's fine, too. <laughs> you want to be in kind of like a state of limbo? Like I was for that one and a half years. Oh, come on. You know that they aren't ready to hear about that yet. It kind of did. Wait, were you talking about the break? Yeah. Oh, I, th <laughs> I didn't even recognize that as a... Uh, I thought that you were just saying that out of nowhere. Nope. It all, it all comes back together. <laughs> oh my god. Let's read. Chapter 1. Distant Memories. Spike walked away from the service, unable to listen any longer. He felt relief as the speaker's voice faded away with the growing distance. Tears were rolling down Spike's face as he fought to keep his jaw from trembling. It wasn't the speaker's fault, of course. Spike had been on the verge of a breakdown ever since she passed. In his grief, he'd made the mistake of refusing to speak at the memorial. He'd screamed his declination at the staff, he felt awful for it and had apologized a few hours later, but he still refused to speak. He had spoken at every other funeral for his friends. He had even blubbered like an idiot when speaking at rarities. Aww. <laughs> but this, this was different. I wasn't sure if this was going to be rarity. I was pretty certain it was going to be Twilight. Yeah, that makes sense. He thought they'd be together forever, or at least for a good while longer. He clenched his teeth as he reminded himself it didn't matter what he felt about it. Twilight was gone. She'd passed away peacefully after ruling Equestria for nearly 300 years. Celestia and Luda's looking at that like pussy shit. Get those numbers <laughs> up. It's like uh, Pearl talking about the suburbs. What are they? Only a couple hundred years old? A small smile snuck its way onto Spike's face as he thought how annoyed that must have made her to only get to 297. Even though she'd been a calm, collected ruler, deep down, she'd still been a perfectionist. A soft chuckle escaped his lips as he rounded a corner. I didn't expect you to feel any happiness today. Spike froze as he recognized the new voice. He wiped away the latest tears and turned to find Discord leaning against a wall. The Draconicus smiled and waved. It's been a while, Spike. Spike didn't know how to process Discord being here. It threw off his mood. But perhaps that had been the point. Grief was melting away ever so slightly to allow curiosity a few moments in the light. I don't know if Spike would have a... Spike doesn't have a deep voice in the future, right? His voice doesn't get any deeper. Well, I think he talks like this, except it's a bit lighter because it's still the female voice actor. 
Um, actually, Ashley he... Ball. No. Kathy Westluck. That would be funny. He does have a role in G5, apparently. I haven't seen it, but apparently he's still kicking. Oh, yeah. So, yep, Spike still in each iteration of My Little Pony, my man. Yeah, Spike had uh, what happened to Fluttershy happened to him in Forever Young, but he just didn't notice. He was just like, oh, I guess I'm not going to age. Dragons. <laughs> Do dragons canonically live forever in their world? Or is this just a Spike thing? They live a really long time. We don't know how long, though. But we can assume it's at least a really long time. At the very least, the last dragon lord was all like, I'm gonna, I'm getting too old for this, so I'm gonna retire. Oh. And that's when Ember became the dragon lord. Huh. <gasps> Wait, Ember's a dragon lord? Yeah. Dang. Thought it'd be a dragon lady. But I'm sexist. Hey. You sexist pig. You know me. My sexism is quirky and entertaining. It's not like that bad sexism. You disgust me. Yeah, maybe I should. But maybe after this spike voice, you'll find me endearing again. I never... Oh, wait, no, that's not a good one. Oh, I would have killed you if you kept it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never expected to see you again. Discord levitated into the air, floating over to Spike and landing on his back. Okay, this is a problem with this fic. Like, I think I know who this is, who's talking, but still, it is annoying. <laughs> I don't like it when stories oh, do this. Oh, I see this, what you're talking about. Yeah. Where it's like, it doesn't say, Spike said, Discord said, yada yada. Yeah, it shouldn't have the uh, cutoff in between the dialogue and the whatever it's called there. That, I believe, is an action tag, but it should also have like, shoot, I can't remember what it's called, a dialogue tag, which is the Spike said, Discord said thing that I was referencing. He said, she said. Heh. Yeah. I think if it says, like, Discord levitated into the air, floating over to Spike and landing on his back, then uh, immediately had dialogue, you'd assume it's a Discord talking. But because there's a break there, it's a little bit ambiguous. Yeah, I think it's meant to be, like, a style thing. It's just really annoying. Yeah. You hear that? You got an annoying style, bud. Hey, give Speedy Quill a break. This is the first story we've read of theirs. As far as we know. They're like Thorn Quill, but speedier. <laughs> You've grown the last few centuries. I could hold you in my paw the first time I met you, and now... Oh! He still could, just make his paw bigger. Oh yeah. Yeah, that, that would do it. He motioned along the length of Spike's body. What are you, the size of a small house now? Spike rolled his eyes and continued through the streets of Canterlot. I'm the size of a big house, okay? I'm a big boy now. <laughs> Why did you come here, Discord? Discord's face suddenly appeared from above as he leaned down the front of Spike's head. Did you really think I wouldn't come? You haven't exactly been around the last 200 years. I figured you'd died. The light in Discord's eyes dimmed. I almost did. At least, I wanted to after... Oh, Fluttershy. Fluttershy. That has to be Fluttershy. It's absolutely Fluttershy. Man. So Spike and Discord are like buddies? Yeah, actually. That's nice. They became buddies in the episode Dungeons and Discords. Uh huh. Where... They bonded over Dungeons and Dragons? Well, the My Little Pony version, which is Ogres and Oogliets. Man, it could have been like Dungeons and Draconiquas. Discord's the only Draconiquist in Equestria. Actually, you know what? I think yeah, it doesn't actually work because he's a real person thing. And they might not actually have ogres or oogliettes in My Little Pony universe. Oh, that makes sense. Wait, oogliettes no, or no, no. oobliettes? Oobliettes. I, know, I remember the oobliette because that was a thing in uh, uh, Enter the Gungeon. Yeah, it's probably oubliettes. I just forgot. Yeah. I wasn't sure if there was a, another type of creature I wasn't sure of. Uh, I, I hadn't heard of. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyways, so yeah, they've been buddies ever since. Nice. I really like the pairing. It makes a lot of sense. I ship it. I don't. I would hope you don't. He flew off of Spike's head, facing away from the dragon. 
I've I've never lost anyone before. Spike felt a glimmer of anger rising. The others didn't count? Discord turned to him, his ears drooping. You know I didn't mean it like that. I meant anyone close. Of course I was good friends with all of them, but Flutter... Spike watched as Discord turned away again. But it wasn't fast enough for Spike to not notice the tears welling up in his eyes. The dragon sighed as he stood onto his hind legs, bringing his head up to where Discord was floating. I'm sorry. Until recently, I don't think I fully understood what you've gone through. I mean, I loved each and every one of them, but... Twilight... Discord turned his head and nodded. There are some deaths that hit harder than all the others combined. Spike felt the tears welling up in the corners of his eyes. He reached up to wipe them away as he started to sniffle ever so slightly. Discord flashed an oddly sympathetic smile and conjured a large handkerchief. Spike took it without a word and blew his nose. One of the corners burst into flames, causing Discord to snap the fabric out of existence again. Spike looked down at the ground. Uh, sorry. No, no. My fault for not making a fireproof hanky. Why did you come? Discord seemed offended. <laughs> to pay my respects. And to check on my old O&O buddy. <laughs> that looks like a uh, an emoticon. <laughs> yeah. And to check on my old O&O buddy. The real question is, what are you doing here? No speech? No goodbyes? No heartfelt stories? Spike blew a puff of smoke at the Draconiquis. I'd rather not talk about the past right now. Discord rose a little higher into the air. At this point in our lives, the past is what we have. Leave it alone, Discord. I can't. Spike glared up at him. And why not? Because I made a promise to flutter shy. That caught the dragon off guard. O what? Discord lowered himself, landing on Spike's nose. I swore I would keep an eye on our friends. Of course, by that point it was just you and Twilight. And now it's just you. Ah, Fluttershy was the last to die. Not counting Twilight. Aww. That makes sense. She does live a pretty healthy life. Yeah. I don't need you watching out for me. I'm an adult. Please. Is there anyone in this world that can say they're actually an adult? Because I think you're all just children playing pretend. Spike smirked. And let me guess, you're the only one not pretending. Confetti peered out of nowhere. We have a winner. Come on, Discord, I just want to be left alone. Is that too much to ask? So that you can be miserable with your fond memories? If that's my choice, yes! The last word came out louder than expected. Discord put earplugs in and shook his head. You really must learn to control that volume. Spike sighed. <sighs> Sorry. The Draconiquis began to float upward. Would you mind following me somewhere? Spike stared at him for several seconds before spreading his wings. He lifted off the ground and followed Discord as they left Canterlot behind. The two of them continued rising until they were surrounded by clouds. Discord snaked through the air, dodging clouds as he went. Spike had grown too big for maneuvers like that. He plowed through each cloud he came to without a second thought. Where are you taking me, Discord? Where else? Home. Spike slowed down until he was hovering in place. That's the last place I want to be right now. And I doubt I'd even fit in any of the buildings. Discord turned around and sighed. <sighs> True. I keep forgetting about your sighs. But there's something you should see all the same. We'll just have to make a few adjustments. Don't you dare shrink me! Discord grinned. I swear that didn't cross my mind. <laughs> He snapped his claws and Spike saw a flash of light. 
When his vision cleared, he was staring at a brown pegasus, but the smirk looked all too familiar. Discord? In the feathers, but perhaps you should focus on yourself for a moment. Discord summoned a mirror, and Spike felt his body begin to plunge towards the ground. It took him a moment to gain control of his wings again, luckily only falling a few dozen feet. He slowly climbed back to his previous altitude and stared in the mirror. He was a pegasus! A purple pegasus with a short green mane! He even had a cutie mark of a quill and scroll! What did you do to me? Discord sent the mirror away and smiled. What? You told me not to shrink you, and I didn't. Well, not directly. Spike glared at him. Why are we doing this? Because I'm trying to help you through a tough time. That shut Spike up instantly, and Discord rolled his eyes. Don't act so shocked. I've been reformed for centuries. Did you think I would just slide backwards after they were all gone? Spike shrugged, making Discord groan. Ugh. How long have you known me? Too long. But when have I ever... Do you really want to ask that question? Discord slowly shut his mouth and nodded. Either way, I want to show you something. Spike followed Discord as they flew on, eventually descending into the ever-familiar village of Ponyville. Spike looked around at the shops and town square. It definitely wasn't the same as he remembered, but Ponyville hadn't changed too drastically. Not like Canterlot had. Spike noticed Discord heading off in the direction of the old castle. He began to follow him, looking around at the ponies. He didn't recognize a single one. His heart fell a little, thinking of all the friends he'd had once. Here we are. Spike brought his gaze forward and gasped as he saw Discord was leading him. But it couldn't be. He was staring at Golden Oak's library. What? How? Discord smiled. Now, Izzy, if you forgot the lore here, Golden Oak's library had a bit of a blow up. Yeah, I remember. That was like Twilight's library. Yep. It went boom and killed a bunch of bees. Oh, the bees! Yep. That's so devastating. It is. It's so sad. When was the last time you were here? Well, I suppose. Spike was lost. How long had it been? Fluttershy's funeral. Spike was brought out of his own thoughts as he heard Discord say those words. One hundred and ninety-seven years ago. Plenty of time for a seed to grow. Oh my god. Sick rhymes. So... There was like 197 years between the death of Twilight and the death of Fluttershy. Yeah. And every other one of the main six died before Fluttershy. Yeah. Let's face it, either Pinky or Rainbow went out first. <laughs> if it was Rainbow, it would had to have been some kind of horrible accident. And if it was Pinky, it had to have been due to some kind of like drugs, drug Disease, overdose, drug. Yeah. It would, it would have to be the saddest of them all. <laughs> like, really <laughs> depressing. She's probably the one who died first, let's face it. She's, like, the one you'd expect to, I don't know, live longer, because she's always so happy, and then she just, you know, dies young. She probably took herself out right before another character was about to kick it so that she could be the first of her friends to die and she wouldn't have to see any of her friends <laughs> go out. She's watching Rainbow Dash on the highway about to collide with, like, a oncoming vehicle she's like oh no no you don't shoots herself in the head <laughs> god uh, the amusing thing is that that wouldn't work yeah rainbow dash would never drive a car she's definitely more of a motorbike gal but i mean that pinky wouldn't die from that oh getting shot in the head by a gun yeah she would absolutely be able to bend it around herself dang we don't know how her body manipulation fourth wall powers work but they're pretty crazy. Ah, she's kind of like Spinel. Yeah, kind of. Nice. Except more powerful. Well, yeah. Far more powerful. <laughs> Discord looked up at the tree. Fluttershy and I had it planted not long before she passed, and she imparted her wishes to the town 
as to what should be done once the tree was grown. It was the last gift she wanted to leave for Twilight. Spike felt tears rolling down his cheeks before he could stop them. Now that he was staring at the tree more, he noticed it wasn't exactly the same. It wasn't her library. It wasn't their home. But all the same, it sent a wave of nostalgia washing over him. He looked at Discord to see him smiling. So, if Twilight went to this library, how come Spike never came with her? Falling out, man. It's a, just a real tough time. Man, the last thing he said to Twilight was over a hundred years ago, and it was piss off. <laughs> yeah. Damn. He gave her the middle finger, and she didn't know what that meant because she had hooves. <laughs> he looked at Discord to see him smiling. Do you want to go in? Spike nodded, and they walked forward. I don't remember Twilight ever mentioning this. Discord shook his head. She didn't know. Well, there we go. That's so sad. She didn't know. They were actually going to invite her to see it next month. The anniversary of when she moved to Ponyville. Spike felt his heart breaking, and the tears started again. Fate was far more cruel than he'd ever known. He did his best to rein in the tears as Discord continued. When they found out the other day, they changed the name. It was Golden Oaks up until two days ago. They came to the front entrance and Spike had to bite his lip to stop himself from falling apart. The Twilight Oaks Library. Friendship is magic. He had to stop himself from falling apart because they spelled her name wrong. It's actually <laughs> Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> It's Princess Twilight Sparkle to you, simpletons. Discord pushed the door open to reveal the interior of the tree. Though not identical, the library shared many characteristics with its predecessor. Spike looked up at the shelves of books as memories flooded his mind. So many hours organizing and reorganizing. In the late nights when Twilight refused to stop studying and he'd fall asleep next to her. The parties that had been held in the common area... The loft bedroom. Can I help you? Spike's attention was brought forward as he found a young mare in front of him. She was lavender in color with a dark mane and a pair of glasses perched on her nose. There was a slight sparkle to her. <laughs> there was a slight sparkle to her overall appearance. It's literally someone doing Twilight cosplay to be the mascot of this library. Oh my god. Absolutely genius marketing. Yeah. It's like when they had Squidward dress up as Spongebob. Yeah. Sp Spike had to blink several times to make sure he was seeing properly. The grief must be too much for him. There was no way that this pony... Ah, yes, I was looking for a particular book. Perhaps you can help locate it. It's called Friendship and its role in equestrian history. It's called friendship and its consequences. The mayor smiled and nodded. I'm positive we have a copy of that. I can't remember the voice. I think it was something like that. Spike noticed something behind the mayor in that moment. A book vanished from the shelf. He glanced at Discord, who hadn't looked away from the mayor yet. Wonderful. I'd love to check a passage in it. The mare turned away and went right for the spot where the book had obviously been shelved. She paused when her eyes found the area, but not the book. Um, excuse me for a moment. I must have put it somewhere else. As the mare started walking around, Spike turned to Discord and spoke in a hushed tone. What's going on, Discord? She, she looks like... Yes, the resemblance is uncanny, isn't it? I suppose that genetics find a way to manifest in a similar pattern more than once. Spike looked at the mare as she continued pacing along the shelves. But Twilight never... His eyes widened as he connected the dots. Her coat. It shimmers like a crystal pony. She's a descendant of Flurryheart. Bingo. A great, 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 great granddaughter, to be precise. Oh my god, she must be like 14 or something. Yeah, 
the bloodline carried by Twilight's brother, and her, by extension, has spread across Equestria. But most this far along don't even realize they're related to the former princess. This one, on the other hoof. He motioned to the mayor. She took this position because she's trying to learn everything she can about her distant aunt. Especially now. A sudden pop sounded the rematerialization of the book as it appeared on a table. The mayor turned at the sound and spotted the book at once. Her smile sent a shiver down Spike's spine, reminding him too well of Twilight. Oh, there it is. I must have forgotten to put it back on the shelf. So you can really hear the resemblance in uh, the voice for Twilight here, for uh, Twilight's descendant here, and uh, Twilight from Sunlight Sliders. Absolutely. She grabbed the book and brought it to the stallions. What? Oh yeah, that's right, they're stallions right now, I forgot. Yeah. This is one of my favorite books. I've learned so much from it. Friendship truly is a big part of our history, especially thanks to Princess Twilight. Spike cleared his throat. <clears throat> you, uh, you look familiar, like I've seen a picture of you or something. The mayor giggled. <laughs> I've never had my picture anywhere. Must have been... She trailed off as her eyes glazed over slightly. Do... do you remember the picture at all? Discord opened the book and flipped a few pages. He turned the book around and pointed at a picture of six ponies and a young dragon. I believe he's thinking of this one. The mayor stared at the picture, taking in the likeness. How... how did you know? Spike was about to answer when Discord cleared his throat. Ahem. Perhaps it would be best to unmask ourselves. Spike's eyes widened in panic. Discord! I'll rip this place apart if I revert! Fine, I'll figure it out. A flash of light blinded everyone. When the library came back into focus, Discord stood there in his original form. The mayor looked up at him in awe. She turned to Spike to discover a dragon. He stood nearly as tall as Discord, but much broader. Almost like one of those heroes out of the old adventure stories. You're... you're Spike. Spike nodded and smiled. And you are? Um, um, Diamond... Diamond... Sparkle? That's a lovely name. Wha... what are you doing here? Spike turned to Discord. I'm guessing something to do with my grief. Discord shrugged. Why would I care about a silly thing like that? Spike smiled and turned back to Diamond. I'm sorry if we were intruding. It's just been a long day. The awe disappeared from Diamond's eyes, replaced with sadness. I'm so sorry for your loss. Everything I've read says you were one of her closest friends. Yeah, he's basically your uncle. Yeah. Great, 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 great uncle. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, gotta call him Grunkle now. Grunkle Wouldn't Spike. Wouldn't want a Grunkle Spike. Yeah. Spike sat down and shook his head. She was more than a friend. She was my big sister. Or more honestly, she was like a mother to me. She hatched my egg when she was only six. Diamond's eyes widened. I never read that. Spike smiled, feeling his heart grow a little lighter. I've got plenty more where that came from. Would you like to hear more? Just paint that seven ninety nine a month for Spike Bedtime Story subscription. Yes. It's really worth it, especially with the prices of streaming services nowadays. That would be pretty cheap. Yeah. Diamond nodded and sat down. What was she like? What were her hobbies? How old was she when she ascended? What was her family like? What were her friends like? Were they as amazing as they seem in the books? Spike laughed. <laughs> oh, you're definitely related to Twilight. Why don't I just start from the beginning? Discord summoned a bucket of popcorn and began munching. 
Oh, this is going to be good. Spike smiled up at his old friend. The Draconiquis knew too well what Spike had needed. Wallowing in the memories by himself wasn't the answer at all. They needed to be shared, and seeing this young mare in front of him made him realize that Twilight wasn't gone. Not entirely. The dragon took a deep breath. So, it all started just before the 1,000th Summer Sun Celebration. Well. The End that was Distant Memories by Speedy Quill. Wow. What a story. Man. I was expecting a little bit more of like delving into his grief, but this was like a a, a much more pleasant turn than I expected. Yeah. Uh, I definitely like the whole carrying on the stories of your loved ones and stuff. That's very sweet. Yeah. And who better to do that for Twilight than Spike? Yeah. It's really a, a lesson that I need to learn, frankly. Because, let me True. tell you, Wizzy, you once you're dead, I'm not try. I'm going to try and avoid thinking about you ever. Aw, that's so nice. I know. Uh... <laughs> it's like, okay, he's gone. Finally moved on. <laughs> no, it's a... Uh, it's a depressing thing. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But like, imagine after I die and you get to tell your grandchildren about the arm wrestling tournament. Oh, <laughs> wow. About when I beat your ass in the arm wrestling tournament. That's right, I cheated. And in real life... Ross hits me. I do hit Wizzy. It's so much fun. You guys should try it. Guys, help. It's the first ever domestic abuse podcast. That is not the first I don't know, would ever. This, would that be considered domestic abuse, though? Because, like, you're in a totally different area of the country. That's not very domestic. Yeah, no. I don't think it would be considered that. Either way, mm. it wouldn't be the first ever depending on what we're talking about. Well, there... I meant one where someone gets abused on the podcast, and I hope that hasn't happened before, but I could actually see that happening, because that's the there, internet. There are a few, like, whatever they're called, um, Chad Bros, far-right podcasts. Oh, with, with stuff like Fresh and Fit? With those uh, women. That is true. Are they actually, like, hitting the women on there, though? No. But I have heard a few of them verbally berate some of them. A few of the men verbally yeah, berate some of the women. Yeah, they really hate women. They do. It's so funny to be so obsessed with a woman's looks and then just, like, you know, be that sexist. It's like, seem to want nothing to do with the women afterward. Yeah, at least they're not as sexist as Wizzy. That's true. Yeah, but mine's quirky and endearing. Uh, the more you say it, the more true it gets. I'm never See? gonna stop uh, saying it until that is like my thing, <laughs> and I revive sexism. <laughs> oh, I'm God. like the pipeline to bigotry. You're a monster. Ah, uh, but at least I'm not a distant memory. At least you're cute. Oh, hey, it's September first. Aw, I do have a pin that says uh, "cute gay in here to stay" or something. Aw. I got it while Ross was out here. Oh, neat. I think that probably wraps everything up. Most likely. All right. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Please go into the description and give that story a like, because, man, that was really an interesting one. It kind of reminds me of, like, Discord teaches philosophy mixed with uh, a moment's worth. I can see that. But that's all the time we have here tonight. Good night, everybody. Love you. Mwah. See ya. As the mayor started walking around. No, no. It's waking. It does say waking. Oh, or maybe it's like Fozzie Bear. Waka waka hanging around. <laughs>